In this video, we're going to talk about snaps. Considering the fact that we discussed AccuSnap in the prior video, now we're going to actually talk about snaps. A couple of things to begin with. On the right hand side, headquarters has taken the liberty of docking the snap mode toolbar. So I'm going to go ahead and undock this for illustration purposes. And what you're going to see across here are a number of snaps. Now, the first thing we need to talk about is something called active snap versus default snap. Active snap is the snap that is active at the moment you're going to be using it. Default snap is the snap it's going to go back to. Now, to illustrate this third icon here, which is key point snap, you notice it has a stippled background. Well, this is acting right now as both my active snap and my default snap. If I choose one of these other snaps, let's say, for example, center snap, you'll notice the icon is highlighted, but you'll notice that key point still has a stippled background. When I'm done using the center snap, it'll return to my default snap, which happens to be key point snap. I'm going to simulate a completion by hitting reset, the right button on my mouse, and you can see I'm no longer in center snap as my active snap. I'm back to key point snap. So that's something to be aware of. Now, how to set the default snap from this dialog, it's as simple as double clicking. So you want to be careful when you pick one of these icons, click on it versus double click on it is different. If I double click, let's say, for example, on center snap, double click, that makes that the default snap. That means I can go and pick any other snap, but as soon as I'm done with it, it will return to center snap. That may not be what you want. So I'm going to set default snap as key point. That's what most people historically expect it to be. So that's something you need to think about, active snap versus default snap. Again, just double click. That makes it the default. Single click makes it the active. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk about the snaps. Now, I'm currently in the Play Smart Line tool. And we're going to be talking about the very first icon, which is near snap point, or we call it nearest. I'm going to select this. Now, if I move my cursor along the circle, you can notice that I am going to be able to start my line at any point on the circle. That's what nearest gets me. So if I move my cursor here and I data, I've started my line on the circle. Now, where on the circle? I, I don't know. It's not exact. It's not the midpoint. It's not the start point. It's just a point on the circle. This is not the most accurate way for you to draw, but there are some examples where we can use near a snap, and that's what I'm going to show you. So I'm going to hit reset, and it goes back to my key point snap. So let's say over here, I'm going to start a line, and I want to draw a line straight up, and I want it to end when it intersects the vector of this other line. Well, I'm going to combine an AccuDraw shortcut. And if you haven't watched the AccuDraw videos, strongly encourage you. I'm going to move my cursor anywhere in this area next to my green tick mark, which is my positive Y axis. I'm going to hit enter on my keyboard. That's smart lock. This locks me on that axis. Now I'm going to make active nearest snap. So I'm going to select nearest snap. I'm going to move my cursor over the sloped line and you'll see that it stops at the intersection of the vector of that line. I'm going to do a data and then a reset. So that's an example of using the smart lock in combination with nearest snap. And it's really a great tool. The next example for using nearest is going to be placing a note. So I'm going to go up to my annotate tab. I'm going to go to place note. And on my tool settings window, I have association selected. I want to associate the note to the element. In order to do that, I have to snap to the element. So down here in my text editor, I'm just going to type in the word note. And as I move my cursor, let's say over the circle, I'm in key point snap. And you can see how I'm constrained to the key points. Well, I may want to have absolute freedom to place the arrowhead anywhere on the circle, but I want to make sure that it is touching slash associated. So I'm going to use my nearest snap. Now I'm going to move my cursor over the circle, anywhere on the circle. I'm going to data and I'm going to move my note out and I'm going to place my note. Now I know that I'm associated to the circle. So if I was to go to something like my move tool, so I'll come back up to home under manipulate, I'll go to move. And if I was to move the circle, 
you can see the note, the leader line and the arrowhead goes with it. And that was because I snapped and I had association turned on and I used nearest snap. So let's go ahead and do an undo, control Z and another undo. The next snap we're gonna talk about is called key point. Now this is the default snap for us right now. It's the most common snap people use. I'm in the play smart line tool. And if I move my cursor over the segment, you're gonna see that it snaps to the endpoints of the segment of the shape and the midpoint. And if I move it over the circle, you're gonna notice I snap to every 45 degrees on the circle. And if I get close to the center, it'll go there. The same is true about the arc. I can go to the end points of the arc and also the midpoint. And if I find the center, if I can move my cursor near it, it will find the center. That's key point snap. So it gets us a lot of the snaps that people typically would use. Center of a circle, center of an arc, midpoint, end point. Now what it doesn't get me is center of a shape. So if I move my cursor over the shape, you can see it's not finding the center, okay? Center snap is good for that. We're gonna talk about a little bit later, why does it snap to the midpoint of the arc? Why does it take a circle and divide its quadrants into 45 degrees? And why does it go to the midpoint of a line segment? It's called snap divisor, and we'll talk about that at the end. The next snap we're gonna talk about is midpoint. This finds the midpoint of an element. So if I move my cursor over the segment, it has a midpoint. If I move it over the circle, the circle was started over on the right, so that is the midpoint. If I move it over the arc, that's the midpoint. So that's very much like what we were getting with key point snap. So now the next one we're gonna look at is center snap. So if I choose this snap, if I move it over the edge of the circle, it'll find the center of the circle. If I move it over the edge of a shape, it'll find the center of the shape. If I can move that over the shape down here, it'll find the center of the shape. And also very handy is the center of an arc. So I have an arc here and I have an arc over here in my curb detail. You can see as I move it over the edge of the arc, it's finding the center. It can be very helpful. So I'm gonna hit reset. I'm back in my default snap, which is key point. Now, before we talk about origin, we're gonna talk about this cell over here to the right. If I'm in key point, if I move my cursor onto the cell, the cell is made up of individual elements, lines, circles, things like that. And if I have it set to key point, it's going to find those individual segments. Well, a cell is placed by an origin. And if I want to copy or move that cell by its absolute origin, we have origin snap. So I'm gonna select origin snap and I'm gonna move my cursor over the edge and you're gonna see it finds the origin. Now every element has an origin. So if I move it over the circle, that was the start point for the circle. If I move it over the arc, that was the start point for the arc. And the same is true of the shapes. The shapes have an origin. So every element has an origin, but we use this typically when we're working with cells. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit reset. The next snap is called bisector. Now this is not midpoint all the time. It can behave like midpoint, but if I move it over the arc like this, you're gonna notice it finds the midpoint, but what if I move it over a line string? Well, that's not the middle of the segment, that's the bisecting of the total length. If I move it over this line string here, again, it doesn't find the midpoint, it finds the bisecting point, so that's bisecting. The next is intersection. Now, if I move my cursor over the intersection of these two elements, they physically intersect. AccuSnap helps me to find that. And if I wanted to start a line at that physical intersection, I would just do a data and my line is started. So I'm gonna hit reset. I'm gonna go back to intersection snap. What if I wanted to find the intersection of this line and this line? they have what is referred to as an apparent intersection out in space. It's not a physical intersection, so how am I supposed to find that? Now this is a little tricky, but it's great. I'm going to use the tentative, the old school tentative. I'm gonna move my cursor over this element. Could be either one of these elements, doesn't technically matter. And I'm going to tentative, that's clicking the wheel. And then I'm gonna hover over the second element. And you'll see the yellow X appears out at the parent intersection in space. 
So if I move it off, it disappears. If I move it over it, it appears. And a lot of these elements here, you can say they all have what's called an apparent intersection. So I'm gonna move my cursor back over this element and I'm gonna do a data. And now I've started my line at the intersection of those two elements. So I'm gonna hit reset. The next two snaps, they look similar and they both are tangent, but they behave differently. So we're gonna look at the first one, tangent snap. I like to call this dynamic. So as I move my cursor over the circle, you can see I can freely move it anywhere I want to. That's the dynamic part. And if I do a data, left click, you can see I'm now free to go anywhere around the circle. Now you'll notice that I'm going in one direction tangent. If I wanted to go the other direction, all I need to do, and this is a little trick, is take my cursor and move it just inside the circle and out the other side. And you can see now I'm going the other direction. You can do that quickly. So I can just dip inside the circle, dip outside. So I can now move it over. I can do a tangent again, and I can move my cursor to the circle to the right, data, and then reset. Now I'm gonna do an undo. Now the second tangent here, this is tangent from a point. If I move my cursor over that same circle, what you're gonna see is I'm constrained to go tangent from a specific point. Now, what is that specific point? That happens to be my default snap, which happens to also be key point. So if I move my cursor here and I do a data, I am constrained to be tangent from that point on the element. Now, when I do that, you're going to notice on the snap mode toolbar, a couple of the icons are now grayed out. You're gonna see this when MicroStation is over constrained, I can't be tangent from that element and tangent from a point on another element. So the icons that are not available will gray out because you would be over constraining the geometry. So I'm gonna hit reset. And actually there's technically more snaps available. You're not seeing all the snaps available. So I can move my cursor over one of these icons that I can right click and I'm going to see a list of other choices. There's perpendicular snap, so I'm gonna right click again, and there's parallel snap. We'll talk about that in a moment. So the next one is gonna be perpendicular, just like we had for tangent, a dynamic. This is dynamic perpendicular. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that snap. I'm gonna move my cursor, let's say over the green arc here. Doesn't matter where, I'm gonna data, and now I am dynamically perpendicular to that. And even though the geometry doesn't show or display, I can still move my cursor out and remain perpendicular because an arc is just really part of a circle. So as I move my cursor out, I can do a data and then a reset. Now the next one, just like we had tangent from a point, I'm gonna select that. This will constrain me to be, in this case, perpendicular from a point. So as I move it over this arc, you see I'm constrained again by my default snap, which happens to be key point. So when I do a data, I am now constrained to be perpendicular from that point. And again, on the snap mode toolbar, you're gonna notice five icons that are grayed out because it would be over constraining to have them available. So I'm gonna hit reset. Now the next one is gonna be parallel. Now the way this works, when I click on this, what it's looking for me to do is identify the element that I wanna be parallel to. Obviously this makes most sense with a linear element. So I'm gonna move my cursor up here and you can see the display of the icon. I'm gonna data on that line. Now I am parallel to that. So when I start another line, data, you can see it's constrained to be parallel to that line I picked. If you've watched the prior AccuDraw videos, you'll notice the compass didn't rotate to match the angle. So I can't use AccuDraw to define the length of the segment. I can correct that by using the RE shortcut. So I'm gonna use an AccuDraw shortcut. I'm gonna type in RE, that suspends my command. I'm gonna pick the line that I'm parallel to. I'm gonna do a data. Now the compass is rotated to be parallel to that. So that's a way to fix that. Now I could have used AccuDraw to start this line in a much more accurate location and use the RE shortcut to be parallel. It would have been better. That's what I typically do. So I'm gonna hit reset. Now the last icon on there is called multi-snaps. Now I'm going to open up the multi-snap settings dialog. And again, you can open this up from the drawing aids tab at the top under snaps, and we can also get to it 
from the status bar at the bottom, just like we did the snap mode toolbar. I'm going to right click on that icon and I'm going to see settings. I'm going to open this up. Now, if you're an AutoCAD user transitioning over, you're probably familiar with an AutoCAD, what's called a running snap mode. This is equivalent to that, except we don't have just one, we have three. We have multi snaps one, two, and three. Now, these are the snaps that are available that you can have active all the time. Again, you'll notice some are missing, like tangent and perpendicular and parallel. That's because those snaps can't be active all the time, as we saw earlier. So these snaps, I can check them and make them active. So for example, if I'm using multi-snap and I'm going to make that my default snap by double clicking, I'm still in the Play Smart Line tool. I'm gonna to move my cursor over this shape. And as I'm between snap points, it'll go to nearest, which is one of my choices, or if I go close to the midpoint, it finds the midpoint and that's using key point. And if I cover over the intersection of those two elements, again, it, because that intersection is one of my snap modes, it'll find it. And if I do the tentative on one, hover over the other data, I can use it that way also. I'm gonna hit reset. These snap modes that you see listed, you can turn on more. For example, I can turn on center if I wanted to. You also can change the priority in which MicroStation uses to find the snaps. Now, this is something you need to be careful about. Like right now, key point, I may want that to be top priority. Find that first and then look for intersection. So I can just change this by dragging this up and release. And now that becomes the priority. What you don't want to do though, as a warning, pro tip here, don't make something like origin, bisector, center, nearest, your number one, because it will find that and then stop looking for everything else. So you want to make something like key point or intersection, your number one and two up at the top. So now it's going to look for those at the top first. As I move my cursor over these elements, you're going to see it's going to find center, but if I go to the corner, it finds the key point. And again, I can find intersection of these two. So this is a way for you to have multiple snaps going at one time. So I'm gonna close that and I'm gonna make key point my default snap because the last thing we need to talk about is the key point snap divisor. So I'm gonna double click on key point. Now this curb detail down here, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit here. And we're gonna talk about the key point snap divisor. This is something that is unique to the key point snap doesn't apply to center or intersection or tangent or anything else. Now the key point snap divisor can be set a number of different ways. If I go up to my drawing aids tab at the top, if I go to the locks group and I select the locks icon there, this will open up my locks dialog. A little more than a third of the way down, you'll see divisor. And right now it's set to two and that's what we were experiencing before. It was taking my lines and dividing them by two. It was taking my circle and it was dividing each quadrant by two, giving me 45 degrees. I'm gonna change this to three and then I'm gonna close this dialog. And as I move my cursor over, I'm still on the smart line, this line, you can see I'm dividing the line by three. If I move it over the arc here, I'm dividing it by three. If I pan over a little bit, if I go to the circle, I'm no longer dividing it into 45 degree segments. I'm doing it by every 30 degrees. It takes 90 degrees, one quadrant, divides it by the divisor, three, that gets you every 30 degrees. And now we're going to apply this to the curb detail. So these purple dash lines, what I need to do is draw purple dash lines and I need them to start at the center of the arc and the arc is this arc right here. I need to start here at the center and I need it to end and divide this arc into eighths. So we're in the Play Smart Line tool. I'm gonna to use the center snap. I'm gonna move my cursor over the edge of the arc down here. You're gonna see that it finds the center. Now I already had lines that represented that, those purple dash lines, but if I didn't have those, this would be a way for me to find the center. So I'm gonna start my line by doing a data and I've started it there. Now I'm gonna match the attributes here. So I'm gonna do an alt data, and now I've matched the attributes. Now my job is to divide that arc into eight segments. Now I showed you how to change the snap divisor from going to the locks dialog. There's a keyboard shortcut, it's the letter K. So I press K, on my screen appears a dialog, key point snap divisor. 
The current value is highlighted. Right now it's three because we changed it to that. All I need to do is type in the new divisor value. Now we do have graphical choices here, just a few of them, okay? But I need to type in a number that isn't represented there. So I'm gonna type in eight, and then I can hit enter on my keyboard, which is expedient way, or I can click okay. I'm just gonna click okay. Now as I move my cursor along this arc, you can see it's dividing it into ace. So I do a data reset. I already have the center here, start a new line, move it along, data, reset. I move it to the center, data, and I move it along. And you can see it would be no time at all that I've divided this arc into equal segments to by eight. So you could put in any number you wanted to. So that's a quick way for you to do that. So hopefully you found this informative. We'll see you in the next video.